he sneaking it to tonight. Now we're back with Haiku, you know, the BOS one or the BOS, and here's my install system on VBooks, of course, because there's no recording software available at the moment. But I thought I'd show you how to install it. So here we go. This is my install system, and I'm going to quickly go to Rip Linux. So five four three two one two one two three four five six seven eight. There we go. The blue screen one. Do you remember? I don't think the other night. Now, Rip Linux is like a recovery CD, does partitions and everything. So I thought I'd use this one just to partition my disk for a laugh. Yes. So anyway, right click, we'll go to Applications, Partition Tools. Now, I could have used Parted, CF Disk, or G Parted here, but I've opted to go for G Parted so you can see a bit more what's going on. So basically, all I'll do is click there, click on Device, and create a partition table. That will tell me it's all going to be arrayed here. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we'll do that. All done. So what I'm going to do first is create my first partition. So I'm going to click New. There's a primary partition, but I'm not going to use ext2. I'm going to go down and use a different one for a change. So Riser FS is the one I'm going to use today, just for a change to keep you on your toes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you do. So what I haven't done here is clicked anything to do with any swap. So I'm going to resize that to start with. So anyway, we'll move that back and give yourself about a gig of extra space. And then once you've done that, you basically click Resize Move, and there we go. But I'm not just going to make that a primary partition, I'm going to make that a different partition completely. I'm going to make that an extended partition. So we go over here again, and we click Extended. There we go. And we click Add again. That's the one I wanted. Yes, super. Now on the last one, we go to Add, and then we go to Linux swap. Now, whether it actually uses a swap is another thing. I'm not sure on this one. The BOS is a, goes back in the day, like 1991 is when it first started. But hey, so I'm going to click on apply, apply again. It does its stuff. It's creating a primary partition, extended, and a logical, and we're done. We click close. It checks the partitions for us, and in theory, we should be all ready to go. Now the main thing to remember is, on your primary partition where you're going to put Haiku, or Hayaku, you need to make it a bootable partition. So you go there to Manage Flags, click on it just once, click the boot box, and then just click Close. That actually makes it a bootable partition, otherwise you're going to do all this work, and you're going to boot it, and nothing's going to happen. So hey, this is really, really important. So we're all done there, basically. So we can come out of Rip Linux because we don't have partition, and the next screen you'll see we run straight into Haiku, like this one. So anyway, we're running a live CD again, Haiku again, we're all ready to rock and roll, we're ready to go. Right, okay, there's a the screen, you've seen it before. I'll click my uh, place where I'm living, desktop live CD. I've not gone to straight to run the installer, for particular reasons. But I'm not going to tell you them, are you? I'm not really, no, I'm not going to tell you them. But anyway, I'm going to use the installer from the live CD, just to see if it works. Because I've used the other installer before, and it works, so does this one work? So it should do. Now here it tells you that if you've got a multi-partition computer, you have to edit Grub yourself. But it does give you all the information to do it, so that's okay. But if it's just for Haiku itself, it will put Grub where it's got to be, and you're Anki Dory, and ready to go. Super. So I'm going to click Continue. Ready to go. So it's no no partitions found, but we have got one. But we have to B E file system eyes it basically make it a B E file system. So we click set up partitions. I'll click there once. Now there's our riser FS volume 7.1 gig. I'll highlight it. Look at that. Then we go up to partition. Slowly but surely, he says, initialize it. We want to do that, otherwise we can't install it. Basically, do it once continue because that's what we want to do isn't it really yes just accept all the recommended stuff here it's all fine remember it is an alpha so don't use it on a proper system if you haven't got a spare proper system just do it on vbox just for now just see how it goes so it's all done we're all okay we're all ready to go so what do we do okay basically you get rid of that completely and there we go choose your target now you want to target your drive you're just done so it's a little volume there, drivey thingy, do free thingy thingy thingy. Now, there's no optional packages at the moment because I hadn't 
get connected to the internet beforehand. Silly me. But hey, whether it was there or not, I don't know. So you click begin, and basically off we go. Now this bit takes around about between 15 to 35 minutes. So what you will see as we go along, I'm just editing it as I go, because otherwise the video will be so, 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 so long. But it just gives you an idea of how it goes. And as you can see, on the top of the screen there, you'll see my resize of FS volume. It's slowly, slowly filling up with applications and stuff. Super. Nice. Love it. We're getting there. Super. I'm getting bored now, so hopefully I've remembered to advance it. Yeah, here we go. We're getting there, slowly but surely, slowly but surely. But if you give yourself at least 30 minutes to install it, that shouldn't be a big deal, really. 30 minutes should do it. Okay, all depends on how old your hardware is. If you're really old hardware, give it 40 minutes. But on average, 20 to 30 minutes should do it, no problem. As you can see, we're nearly done here. Up to 15,000 out of 19,000 packages it wants to do, and we're done. Whoa, super duper. We're all done. So, basically, all you do now is click quit when we go down there. Or you can just install it again if you want to. But you click quit, and we're done. And then we're going to go straight back into the installation screen. Well, no, not the installation screen. Into my volume that we've actually installed it onto. So, here we go. Look, we're there. We're going. We're going. Has it installed, or is this the live CD? So, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I'm getting worried, blue screen. Is it good? Is it good? Is it going to come up? Oh, yes. There you go. We're in. You've installed it. No problem whatsoever. Look at that. It was quite simple, really. I mean, I said it was intermediate to expert level, but... If you really give a good try, it ain't too difficult really, is it, when you think about it. So there's my little installed volume, I've got it here. Lovely. Nice. Everything's there, all my apps and stuff. Clock, la di la di la di da etc, etc, etc. We're all done, basically. Everything's there on your hard disk. And from this point on, you can go out and try and get some stuff to install on it. Now, there are ways of doing this, but I'm going to leave that up to you, basically. But hey, that's enough for me. Sneaky Linux out. See you later.